If you can wrap your head around oil and fluids, there's probably nothing critical in Vanilla Factorio that you can't handle. It's a critical turning point and a gateway to powerful new tools and technologies. Crude oil locations are shown in the remote view as pink squares, and mousing over them will show the combined yield of all of the deposits in the area. In the standard view, we're looking for pools of black liquid, a little bit of steam coming out of them, each has their own yield amount, and we need pump jacks to extract it. Unlike ore patches, crude oil does not run out, but it will gradually decrease. The minimum amount is 20% of the initial yield, or 2 oil per second, whichever is higher. As you rotate a pump jack, the location of that blue arrow shows the exit point of the oil. The expected resources value is always exactly one-tenth of the yield percent for that crude oil deposit. But the number further up under mining speed also takes into account mining productivity, which is adding 10% in this case. Here's our first oil mining setup. We have pump jacks on all of the oil pools. We've got power connected to everything, got the pipes hooking everything up into one unified pipeline. Again, we have the color-coded lines following the pipe and indicating what type of fluid is in it. We have the arrows at the sides of the screen showing how far the pipe goes in each direction. The pipeline extent there, 56 out of 320. The pump jacks come to life when we add some more pipe, but only briefly while it fills up. The pipeline extent still stays at 56. It's not measuring the total amount of pipes. It's measuring the distance from one end of the pipeline to the other. Pumps can extend that maximum distance, effectively dividing your pipe network into individual sections. The new pipeline now has more room to grow. A massive change to how fluids work in Factorio 2.0 is that fluids teleport within each section. To think of it another way, there is no flow or throughput. The amount of fluid instantly equalizes in all of the pipes in a section. The pumps transferring fluids between the sections of the pipe technically is limited to 1200 a second, but practically speaking, this doesn't matter. As long as there's space, you simply add more pumps. 2, 3, 5, 10, 20, whatever you want. Of course, this new fluid system is blatantly overpowered, but I understand why they did it. Under the old system, fluid did not flow evenly through the pipes, junctions were a big problem, pumps could work unpredictably. They wanted a more predictable system, but one that wouldn't slow down the simulation. In the Factorio 1.1 series, I started using trains at this point, but with this new fluid system, I think pipelines are a much better option for transporting oil. Regardless of how much you need, you can simply cram it into a single pipeline, divide it up with enough pipes every so often down the route, and you're good to go. Once you've gotten the oil back to the main factory, it's time to refine it. And the refinery is, um, not small. I'm also going to want some extra room here for pipe logistics and oil shoulder, if you will, so I'll reserve that space with a ghosted refinery, and then four more for my initial setup. Many more will come in the future. I like to use a seven tile gap in between each row of machines in the oil area. There's only one recipe we can use the refineries for initially. Basic oil processing. Crude oil in, petroleum gas out. Pretty straightforward. Notice though that the refinery has two input arrows and three output arrows. While we're setting this up, we need to plan for using all of those later. Also, look at the petroleum gas outputs. They're not facing each other. We've learned about rotating by pressing R, but 2.0 introduces a couple of ways to flip or mirror a machine. H for horizontal, V for vertical. Now the outputs are directly facing each other and we're in business. This feature really allows some significant changes to oil setup. I find it useful to imagine pipe logistics as a grid. Each type of fluid reserves a horizontal or vertical path and then other fluids use different ones. A few pipes later and all of the petroleum gas outputs are connected together. Of course, the refineries still need the crude oil to function, so we'll connect that up using a similar method. Refineries kick on as soon as the power is connected, but they're not going to be able to do a lot just filling the pipe of the petroleum gas. There's nowhere for it to go yet. Keep a close eye on your total power supply here. Each refinery consumes over 400 kilowatts. Going into oil, I recommend having 25 to 30 megawatts of production. I'll place down some ghost pipes here to reserve the space for those inputs and outputs that we're going to be adding later. This would be a good time to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Again, we're moving one tile further away from the refinery with each of these pipelines, and then reserving that line, if you will, for that incoming fluid. Much the same approach here for the outputs. Notice that there's still room to walk between the refineries with as far as we have them spaced apart, and each of the three outputs are converging in the middle with their own left to right line. Next up, ghosts of another oil machine, the chemical plant, two inputs and two outputs. 
Again, I'm using a seven tile gap in between the machines here, and unfortunately it's far from clear at this point in Factorio why we're going to need these. Most of the other two refinery products that we'll get to later are going to be turned into the main product, which is the petroleum gas. So we will need these chemical plants to do that before the petroleum gas moves on to be used in other processes. The gas will be used primarily for two items, plastic and sulfur. Plastic needs to be used in more different places, so we're gonna do that first and then send it out to the bus. Plastic is produced from coal and petroleum gas and will be needed in large amounts. I'm unloading onto splitters here to distribute the plastic evenly between our two output belts. This should be enough for our purposes, but even after upgrading the belts, if you want to build big later on, you'll need to wind some belts around the edge or maybe add a second plastic line again. This is why we leave space. We are back out here to the normal shoulder area and there's plenty of room to just bring down the petroleum gas and not have to send it out to the bus. Then there's sulfur, limited enough in its applications that I'm not putting it on the bus. The setup is a bit different here, no solid items required, but it also needs water along with the petroleum gas. Notice how flexible the chemical plants are. In many ways, they're just an assembly machine that's optimized to make various fluid-based products. I have a standard inserter output and also using a side-loading belt here to get a full belt outbound of the smelly yellow goodness. Sulfuric acid and explosives will take what they need from here, that way we don't have to transport sulfur all around. And this is the end of the line then for the petroleum gas. We used it for everything we needed it for and now it can stop. The blue science pack, chemical science, is the fourth research tier and required to get into all of the powerful tools of the mid game. Having bypassed that annoying cliff, we bring the sulfur down from above and that satisfies one of the ingredients. Similar to the grenades in military science, the engine units can be produced slightly faster than they are required for the science packs so we can direct insert those. But we still need more to get this science rolling. Three ingredients are required, including the red advanced circuits. Sulfur is not needed for anything else, so its small journey down the shoulder can end here. The time requirement for chemical science packs is worth looking at as well. 24 seconds for a pair. That's why we have six assemblers for them, even though we're not producing much science yet. Chemical science production lines can definitely be quite sizable. Advanced circuits take a bit of a different approach than most of our production lines. It's mid-game, things are getting more complicated. At first glance, it might look quite strange that I'm putting copper cables on a belt. A reason for doing that is the trend of items taking longer to produce is continuing, six seconds per advanced circuit. That means one copper cable assembler can supply six of them. A bulkier production setup using direct insertion is possible, but then you'd have copper cable assemblers that aren't operating most of the time. Plastic and electronic circuits make up the rest of the ingredients, got an output belt going the other way, we've got the alternating inserters grabbing or putting out as needed, long-handed and standard. Some of the advanced circuits head out to the bus to be transported to other places in the factory, but with chemical science right nearby, we can just drag along the shoulder to reach them. We can now produce chemical science packs. To really understand oil, let's take a look one further step ahead. To fully utilize our refineries, we need to graduate from basic oil processing to advanced oil processing. We add water to the equation, but get some light and heavy oil out, as well as an increased amount of petroleum gas. The critical fact here is that this effectively more than doubles what we're going to be getting out of our crude oil. So it's sensible for this to be an automatic next step and not to go too far further in oil before you get it. But everything we've done so far is required to get chemical science packs and you need those to get the advanced oil processing. Now we just run the chemical science packs up the shoulder to the labs and we're in business. One final point to address is the suggestion by some viewers that we should have rushed chemical science sooner. Think about everything we had to learn in this video. How the crude oil resource works, how to mine it with pump jacks, transporting it to the factory with the new fluid system in 2.0 and how that has changed, how to refine the oil, chemical plants, and setting aside space for advanced oil processing, plastic, sulfur, advanced circuits, and finally, of course, the chemical science packs. These are just the basic essentials. It's way too involved of a process to rush into it when you're not prepared. In my opinion, it makes a lot more sense to wait a little bit longer prepare, do it right the first time instead of creating a big mess you've got to tear down or reorient. I hope this video helps lay that foundation and next time we will look at advanced oil and how to prioritize the various research options that are now available.